Hello, everyone. My name is Max Claps, and I'm IDC's lead transportation analyst in Europe, Middle East, and Africa. I'm here to share with you some of the highlights of a recent study that we carried out on behalf of Nokia about the railway industry, an industry that is truly embracing digital transformation and investing in the enabling infrastructure, in particular, the future railways mobile communication system to empower that transformation. But let me take a step back. Railways are becoming more and more strategic. They account for 8% of global passenger travel, about 9% of freight activity, but only 3% of transport energy use which means they're very energy efficient. According to the International Energy Agency, rail emits 7 to 11 times less greenhouse gases per passenger per kilometer traveled than private vehicles. So they're very environmentally sustainable and they're safe. They are 15 to 20 times safer than cars. Last but not least, they're affordable. They don't require passengers to make any capital investment to travel. No wonder with all of these positive attributes, governments around the world are making huge investments in rail. The European Green Deal, for example, sets a target to double traffic on high-speed rail by 2030 and rail traffic by 2050. More than 20 of the EU member states have included investments for electrification and modernization of rail in their national recovery plans. With every major economy around the world committing critical funding to railways, it was the perfect timing for IDC to understand the role of technology in the next generation of railways. That's why we carried out an online survey of 45 executives and director level decision makers from European and Australian railway companies, and we conducted seven in-depth interviews with senior leaders, railway operators and railway equipment manufacturers. Of course, this was not our first piece of research into railways. We surveyed 29 railways across Europe in 2021, and we found out at the time that they were already investing in digital customer experience capabilities. For example, 75% of them were investing in self-service booking and mobile payments. They were investing in operational efficiency, whereby approximately 50% were using intelligent asset and fleet management tools, and they were investing in critical infrastructure. 70% were, in fact, complementing traditional wayside signaling systems with GSM-based smart signaling systems. However, with this new study, we were able to find out that they've reached an inflection point. They're now looking at the next generation of technologies, such as intelligent traffic management, 5G, artificial intelligence and machine learning, autonomous trains, IoT and edge computing, augmented and virtual reality. But they're doing so not for the sake of technology itself. They're doing it to achieve four interdependent business goals. Number one, they want to increase operational efficiency while targeting net zero. Number two, they want to increase infrastructure capacity utilization by leveraging automatic train traffic control system to increase the frequency of trains traveling on a route or the entire network. And they're using smart predictive operations to help prevent delays and disruptions. Number three, they want to ensure that efficiency and safety go hand in hand even with our utilization rates, thanks to intelligent traffic control systems and cybersecurity. And number four, they want to innovate service offerings to drive revenue growth, which became very urgent after the pandemic negatively impacted traffic for the entire industry. To underpin this digital transformation, the railway ecosystem requires the next generation of communication infrastructure, and in particular, 5G future railway mobile communication system. In fact, according to our new survey, almost 80% of railways are already piloting, planning to start implementing, or designing their plans to deploy FRMCS. Their goal is not just to switch over from existing critical communication infrastructure that revolve around GSMR to enhance reliability, security, and bandwidth, but they also want to push the boundaries 
as one of the railway executives that we interviewed told us. Meaning that they want to use FRMCS as an enabler of use cases that can help grow capacity, innovate services, and run more efficient and sustainable operations. Of course, the road to FRMCS is not without barriers, like difficulty in securing funding, the risk of adopting technology without widespread availability of president customer stories, complacency with existing technologies. So the railway executives that want to accelerate the budget approval process and then maximize the benefits of FRMCS should consider three critical success factors. They should make strategic choices about frequency, deployment model, high priority, railway lines and use cases to build a clear FRMCS investment case that helps secure funding. They need to shift to a new mindset, new culture, and nurture new skills that see and embrace FRMCS not just as a move away from GSMR, but as a, an opportunity to move forward, to innovate. And last but not least, they need to collaborate with technology partners that understand the technical and business evolution from GSMR to FRMCS, and that can provide reliable, interoperable, and secure solutions. Stay tuned for two more podcasts where we'll go into the details of this brand new research. Thank you. Thank you.